What's up guys? So I just finished rearranging the shop. I've been wanting to do a shop tour for a long time, so I figured while the shop is clean, it'd be the perfect opportunity to do that. So let's go take a look. All right, so starting in the front left corner of the shop, I have a titanium multi-process welder. Just now starting to get into welding. Again, I haven't done it for a long time. Practicing some TIG and MIG just for some projects. On around to the drum sanders, a 19 by 38 Supermax. I don't use it all that often, but when I do, it comes in handy. Underneath it is the Craig Foreman for drilling pocket holes. Next is the Laguna Bandsaw 14BX. The one I had before was a Craftsman. I don't even remember what size it was. I think it only had like a six or a seven inch resaw capacity. This one has a full 14 inches. It's been awesome. It cuts through material like butter. We have my vacuum cart, which just makes it easy to move it around. Overhead hose, just keep it from kind of dragging the ground or weighing down the sanders with a, I think it's called the dust stopper from Home Depot with a five gallon bucket. Works great. Keeps all the, the dust and material out of the bottom of the vacuum. Catches it so that the filter doesn't get clogged up as quickly. This is the saw stop three horsepower PCS professional cabinet saw. This is by far my best investment I ever made. I was using the DeWalt uh, contractor table saw before this. It made a world of difference in my opinion. I love it. I have a just some router lift on the end with just a, a cheap router in the lift. I think it was a cobalt router, just what I had in the previous setup. Really need to upgrade it eventually. Here I have a French cleat wall with my extra table saw blades, dado zero clearance insert, cartridge for the dado blade, and then the dado stack. Some woodpeckers layout tools, and then my collection of clamps. Dust collection is a modified Harbor Freight dust collector. I added the filter, uh, upgraded the impeller to the Rikon, I think it was a either a 12 or a 14 inch impeller, and added the Super Dust Deputy from Oneida, which made a significant difference in performance compared to what it had originally, but it's still not as good as, say, buying one that is set up like this. Like I have a Shop Fox set up that's kind of small, same horsepower that does significantly better than this one still does which I'll show you that one in a minute. So I have my dust collection, fly skates, adjusted with this rope. And right now until I'm sure I want everything where it is, I'm not gonna hard pipe everything, just so I don't have to do it over again if I do decide to move something. Cause like I said, this is a new setup that I just finished cause the miter saw used to be in the front left corner where we just were. So I'm gonna try it out for a little while before I put in the dust collection permanently. And then we're gonna move on to the miter saw station. So for the miter saw station, it may look familiar if you watch Jay Bates' video. I purchased his plans when I first moved into this shop and I've loved this setup. Uh, love the amount of storage that it has. The plans were awesome, easy to follow. Starting here is where I charge the batteries. Basically got the charger for the Milwaukee and some old Craftsman drills. Here I have commonly used small parts, quarter 20 fasteners, magnets, all my drills and batteries. Like I said, I use the Milwaukee platform. Most common bits that I use. I have my glues, super glues, a little epoxy, first aid kit, mallets, and pencils. I have a DeWalt DWS779, 12 inch compound miter saw. All the drawers are full with random stuff, routers. Let's see, domino accessories, sandpaper, shop rags, finishing supplies, hardware, Craig jigs, random drawer slides, drawer parts, bunch of other Milwaukee tools, things like that. This is just a mess full of junk. I'm gonna leave that closed. Here I have all my fasteners, electrical drawer, and this is where I keep my track saw. 
tracks for the truck saw are kept on the garage door up front. Bunch of other random stuff. So right here, the first sustainer is just sandpaper. Then I have the DF500, ETS125. I love it. Compared to, I had a cheap palm sander. I think I had the Harbor Freight square head. It was horrible compared to this. I just didn't have a clue until I purchased this and started using it and seeing the dramatic difference in the vibration to the finish on the material when you're using it. Hands down, worth the investment. And the Rotex RO125. I actually just got this, haven't used it that much. I went to go pick it up from my local Home Depot and they went to go ring it up and it wasn't showing up in their system. So the manager said, well, if it's not showing up on our system, just take it. So I got this for free. Got really lucky. Forgot about my mini fridge. Looks like a toolbox, but that's where I keep my water. And the blast gate for the miter saw station. Just does like that. And we'll continue on around to the drill press. This is a Craftsman drill press. It's a two third horsepower, 13 inch drill press. It's a older model. I actually had the Ryobi little mini drill press. This was my grandfather's. And he was willing to trade me my little Ryobi one because he didn't use it near as much anymore as he used to. So he traded me the little bench top for this one. Sink, just rinsing out things, soaps, whatnot. Nothing fancy. This is my air cleaner cart. Also from Jay Bates, just a four-sided 24 by 24 filter with a furnace blower inside to get all the fine dust out of the air. Another tool wall, got screwdrivers, chisels, hammers, some old tools just for decoration, a bunch of hand saws, Japanese pull saws, traditional Western style saw, and speakers because I like music. Oh yeah, this guy. This is the Jet 12 inch joiner planer combo. I love having the ability to joint 12 inches. I wish the planer size was a little bigger, but it's a sacrifice that uh, I was willing to make, you know, to have that capacity for a joiner. I've had no problems with this. It did take a little while to get the beds coplanar. Now that may have been because it was my first time ever messing with a joiner or maybe because you know, some people have said that this particular model is hard to get coplanar. So it took me about, I don't know, two hours to get it dialed in, plus I'm a little OCD, so I was getting it to within a thousandth of an inch. Also a new addition is this add-on over here. I just cut this wall out, so I used to have a 12-foot lean-to that went all the way through from the outside. But I closed in 20 foot of it, because it used to be 30 foot deep, but I closed in 20 feet of it. And I put this guy in here, just a few months ago, actually. So this is where I store all of my sheet goods and all of my lumber. As you see, I have a little bit of a collection. This is the Shop Fox dust collection system that I was telling you about that the same size, I want to say it's a two horsepower. Actually, this one might be one and a half. One and a half horsepower. So it's actually smaller, but it does significantly better than the Harbor Freight one does, even with the upgrades. Now I do have a six inch intake on this one, so that makes a little bit of a difference. Overall, it's a good system. Model number is, it's a W1823 Shop Fox dust collector. Cyclone all in one. And it's actually mobile, it rolls around. And then the four by eight Avid CNC. I've had it for about three months now. And I use the J Bates wasteboard setup. If you're not noticing a trend here, I kind of copy a lot of things that Jay does. He's been a big inspiration to my woodworking endeavors. On around to the right is the CNC workstation. So I have the monitor, the laptop to run it, bits, clamps, a bunch of other clamps and hold downs, extra hardware from the CNC build, some other random stuff. 
This is my tool chest full of mechanic type tools, wrenches, box wrenches. I have a little small pancake air compressor back there. Over here I have spray paint storage or any kind of other aerosol can and my mobile cart for the Fuji Mini Mite 4 Platinum. That definitely speeds up the finishing process, being able to spray it, hose, remote for starting it, things like that. And that's pretty much it for this room. So this is my workbench. It's a Husky adjustable height workbench. I just put a different top on it. I like the, the fact that it's adjustable height so that if I need to use it as an in-feed or out-feed for any, any tool in here, I can. Uh, have all my layout tools in here, two tapes, shooting board, all of my hand planes. Over here I have some clamps for the table. Here I have a little bench standoffs that I made. Woodpecker clamping squares. Random. I'm gonna close that. And that one I know is a mess. It's just a mess. You don't wanna see it. This is a metal cabinet that I just picked up to keep all my finishes, things like that. Rubio, gel stains, regular stain, paints, shellac. This is all the Fuji spray system stuff. Extra glue, oils, acrylic paints, things like that. Nothing fancy. And this is because I wanted to start working out again because I'm getting, losing too much weight. My wife says I'm too skinny. Oh, yep, that's enough. And back to the door. Just some small part storage, random nuts and bolts, things like that. This is a belt sander that I made from plans that I bought online from Matthias. You can see him on YouTube. He has a full build video on it and he sells plans. It's a fun build and I actually use this thing a pretty good bit. Scroll saw, don't really use that very often now that I have the CNC, but I can't get rid of things. I have a problem. It is a, a craftsman scroll saw. It's not the best, but it does the job. And I got it for Christmas, right when I started getting into woodworking. Yep, that's it. And then I have a fire extinguisher for in case there's ever a fire, I can put it out. So that's my shop. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below. Consider subscribing to the channel. And until then, I will see you guys on the next one, I guess.